Welcome to today's live stream. I'm super excited to welcome you here today. Before we get started and get into the really for real live, this is obviously a pre-recorded video where I can tell you a couple things and then we can get started. So uh, honestly what I'm doing is buying myself time to turn the camera on and make sure that everything sounds good. But uh, while we do that, while we wait for myself, let's go ahead and comment below. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Maybe let's start with your name and where you're watching from. And then also I'd love to hear about uh, maybe the latest project you're working on or your favorite software. So if you can post a link below, go ahead and post a link to your portfolio. We'd love to check it out and see what you're up to. And maybe even let us know what your favorite uh, software is or maybe your favorite subject. Do you like web design or print design or making t-shirts or logos or branding? I don't know. Go ahead and comment below and let us know. We'd love to check it out. And then also, if you'd love to see what I'm up to, you can check out my work at DerekMitchell.com. You can see some YouTube videos at YouTube.com slash Derek Mitchell. And then also live streaming at Behance.net slash Mitchell's Garage. So you can check me out there. And then did I say Instagram? I don't know if I said Instagram yet or not. Instagram.com slash D Mitchell Design. So hopefully there's links and buttons and stuff here right there. Uh, anyway, all right, guys, we're about to dive into some really cool stuff. Uh, feel free to comment in the thread. And I'd love to, again, see what you're up to. And I'll try and answer your questions as we get going. But let's go ahead and dive in. Today's video is sponsored by the Graphic Design Bootcamp. If you're looking at becoming a graphic designer and you want to learn more about Photoshop, Illustrator and InDesign, creating real world projects that clients would actually pay you for, for things like logos, business cards, letterhead, and much more. Check out the link below for more information and a deep discount to get started today. One last thing I was going to mention too, because I don't know how much time I'm going to need to turn all this on. Maybe it's ready to go and you know, the real me, the live me can just, just cut this off and we can get to it. But in case I need a little bit more time, let me just tell you about myself. So my name is Derek Mitchell. We've been over that. Also, uh, I live in Montana, in Kalispell, Montana, actually, which is just outside of Glacier National Park. And I've got four daughters and a wife, and we have tons of fun doing outdoor things like riding bicycles. We float the river on our paddle boards. That's a ton of fun. I love to downhill mountain bike. That's a ton of fun. When it snows for like nine months out of the year, we like to go snowboarding and skiing. So uh, I feel like I'm rambling. So at any point, Derek, just go ahead and just you know, let's do this. Let's get live. Let's start teaching. What is going on, Miles? My dog just came to say hello. Hi, Miles. Let me say hello to the people. Come here. Come here. Come say hi. This is Miles, my poodle. We're working on his mohawk. Oh, thanks. Kisses. Oh.
Today's video is sponsored by the Graphic Design Bootcamp. If you're looking at becoming a graphic designer and you wanna learn more about Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign, creating real world projects that clients would actually pay you for, for things like logos, business cards, letterhead, and much more, check out the link below for more information and a deep discount to get started today. All right, guys, we're almost ready to go here. What's up, Justin? I see you in the chat. Behance. Wow, I've got different headphones on tonight. It sounds so weird. Um, yeah, we're talking about how cold it is in Montana. And it was 15 degrees Fahrenheit last night. So, like, way below freezing. So, Justin says, hmm, what are we... Are asking, I asked uh, what, what secrets you want to learn. He says... What are the Adobe Illustrator features that I can use in Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, etc.? So we're just getting ready to go here. <clears throat> All right, guys, let's do this. What's up, everybody? There we go. Welcome to the stream. There we are. Hey, is the sound synced? It might not be synced. Artificial intelligence features. All right. So tonight, uh, I don't have any plans. Sometimes I have plans. Sometimes I just jump into it and we just go for it and see what happens. So uh, kind of leaning on you guys in the chat. I see there's a bunch of us here on Behance, some of us here on YouTube, and uh, I don't see anybody on Facebook yet. But hey, thanks for jumping in and tuning in. My name is Derek Mitchell. If you're new here, I'm a graphic designer, a creative director. Uh, sometimes I develop websites. I don't do as much as that anymore, as far as like the hard coding of things. Uh, usually I end up building things with WordPress or BigCommerce or Shopify. Uh, those are the ones that I end up spending my most of my time in if I'm building a website. Uh, is Content Aware Fill Illustrator? No, Content Aware Fill is in Photoshop. And that seems like a great place for us to jump in. So um, let's see. Let's do this. I, I didn't, so guys, I didn't prepare at all. I, I mean, I'm prepared. I turn the lights on and stuff, but I don't have any like, any like pre-built things for us to jump into. So that being said, let's just explore. Let's see what happens. A quick reminder as I'm opening my browser, this course uh, or this stream rather is sponsored by my courses over at DerekMitchell.com. You can check out the graphic design bootcamp. You can also check out the vault. The vault is literally everything that I've made. Um, best way to get that is to come up here, Derek Mitchell Design or DerekMitchell.com. Go to courses and uh, check out this vault right here. So you can see everything that I've done. Uh, or if you just want the free stuff up here, this tutorials link, you can check these out. These are some tutorials that I've created on YouTube that are a little more straight and to the point instead of me rambling on a live stream. Um, yeah, check that out while you're there. Be sure to jump in and sign up for the newsletter. I don't, I hardly send any emails out you guys. So it's kind of a safe, it's not gonna clutter up your inbox, but I'll send you some cool freebies and some other things like that. So check that out. And then while we're here, actually not while we're here, we're jumping into, I wanna go to pexels.com. I really like this for photography or for photos, rather if you need some photos to work with. I also really like Adobe Stock, stock.adobe.com. And I love Envato Elements. So these are my three favorite stock resources. If you're gonna download templates or photography or anything like that, I definitely highly recommend these. So um, as far as content aware, Phil, we can go into that, Justin. I'm going to play with this real quick if you want. Um, and I think, I mean, maybe you're already aware of it. So um, 
Let's just kind of see if we can find a photo that I feel like would be a good. This could work. We'll, we'll download this one real quick. Special shout out, thanks to Anna. So when you guys use these Pexels uh, assets, depending on on the licensing of that image. I mean, they're all free to download, but a lot of times they appreciate you giving them a shout out. So special thanks to Anna, uh, whoever took this, Anna uh, Schwetz, as far as uh, the artist on that photo for that one. All right, keep scrolling. Scrolly, scrolly, scrolly. Um, those are probably, oh yes, this guy. Since it's fall or autumn, fall, autumn. I don't know, what do you guys say? I'm gonna right click. Save image to downloads. All right, I've got a couple images now. Uh, what I'm gonna do is just open this guy up here in Photoshop. And let's take a look at some of the content aware fill. So right now we're in Photoshop, not in Illustrator, Justin. Um, I don't know if content aware fill has actually come over to Illustrator or not. I know a lot of times things get updated, but I don't think you can do that in Illustrator. I could be wrong though, let me know. Uh, okay, so I'm just gonna hit, I like to hit Command J to jump cut a copy of whatever layer I'm working on to the next layer. So I was in the background layer, hit Command J, it just makes a copy of it, okay? So I love using the content aware fill. There's a few ways to do it. Right now, I have the patch tool selected. This actually uses the uh, Adobe Sensei content aware. This is one way to do it. This is not what I intended to do, but since I've got it selected, we're just gonna do this. Make a selection. Again, this is the patch tool. You hit the letter J on your keyboard to get to this. Now I gotta do is just drag over. Oh, oh. What's going on? Way to go. I already broke the tutorials. <laughs> um, there we go. Let's see if that fixes it. Why, why, why? I'm going to take this moment to say, hey, guys, I've been doing this for over 20 years now. <laughs> and there's still times when I don't know what I'm doing. Um, so let that be an encouragement for you. Like Photoshop is hard. There's a lot to it. And uh, if you ever feel stuck, uh, you know what you could do? You could join my Facebook group. Um, not trying to promote that for me personally. Just I want you guys to have the help you need. And sometimes, you know, it could be strange hours of the night and you need help and maybe I'm sleeping. So if you want to check out the uh, facebook.com slash groups slash complete graphic design. Uh, it's a Facebook group I have uh, that has over 18,000 members in it. So it's a really great place if you guys get stuck and you need help from somebody who knows what they're doing or maybe a fellow uh, a peer, um, not necessarily like we're all, we're all kind of in this together, right? So this is a great resource if you get stuck on something and you're looking for help, uh, check out this Facebook group. Lots of really great people in here who would love to help you if you get stuck on things. Um, <laughs> I love that. Justin, how to make working with colors easier when we suck at color. That's a super great topic too. We'll touch on that. Um, okay, so, oh, duh. Look at what I did, you guys. <laughs> Thanks, Justin. He says, turn off the layer, the top layer. Duh, so here's what happened there. I had the visibility of the top layer on, but look, if we look over here, my background was the one that was selected, not the top layer. See you guys. Justin, if you're not already in the Facebook group, you should join us. Could obviously use your help. <laughs> okay, so let's try this again. Let's, <laughs> I love it. So back to the patch tool. I'm just gonna make a selection here. And then I'm just gonna drag it over, there we go. That's what it's supposed to do. And you can tell it where to sample from. This tool I actually use a lot when I'm correcting faces. If there's like little blemishes, um, you know, you wanna kinda correct a little bit. This is a great tool. Uh, here we got some things that didn't turn out super great. So I might just click and drag around there and kinda clean it up. For whatever reason tonight, this looks terrible. Oh, it's cause I'm on normal. Let's change this content aware. We're learning all kinds of stuff tonight, you guys. That's better, but still kind of terrible. Let's try a different approach. Command J to jump cut this again. Uh, this time I'm just gonna get my lasso tool. So I hit the letter L, get the little lasso tool. We're gonna make a selection around this little ribbon. Um, let's just say you're trying to hide this and use this sweatshirt to put a logo on there or something. 
So what I want to do is I'm, there, there's a few ways to do it. If it was me just working here and just kind of going fast, I'd hit control shift and delete. It's just a shortcut I know to pull up this fill dialog box. And you can change it to all kinds of things. I could make it say, hey, fill it with the foreground color, which in this case, if I filled it with the foreground color, it'd be, it almost looks black, but it's, a, it's like a dark, dark blue color. Or I could say, hey, fill it with my background color, which would be white. But in this case, I want to use the content aware and it's gonna look at all the pixels around it and fill it and blend it to match. Boom. Now it sees that these fingers were down here. So sometimes you might have to like do it a couple times to make it match. And in this case, it kind of blurred all of the stitching on this. So we might have better luck instead of using the content aware, using like the stamp tool. So I'm gonna hit the letter S to get the stamp tool. I'm gonna option click over here and say, hey, I want you to source from here. I'm gonna come over here and then paint this back in. So the colors don't quite match right now because it's a little bit darker over on this end, but this is a great way, you know, one of many ways we can kind of start to blend things in. Okay, and I could, there's a few things I could do to clean this up. Should I keep going on this? You guys wanna move on to something else? Uh, let's see, another idea, let's talk about working with colors easier. Okay, so we talk about that too a little bit. We're gonna to treat tonight kind of like a Q and A. If you guys have questions, I'm just here to kind of pop in and, and, and answer some questions. Um, clearly, I'm also <laughs> loving having you guys in chat to help me out too. All right, so content aware fill. That's that was kind of a terrible example. Didn't work out super great. Let's just kind of keep playing around here. Let's say we want to change this leaf to something else. I'm just hit the letter L to get my lasso tool. Draw around it. Go to edit, fill, or even just click right on content aware fill here. We'll click on fill for now. Content aware fill. We'll click OK. Let's see what happens. Boom, the leaf is gone. It's that easy. So then you could change this to something else if you wanted to. Maybe he's holding onto a string or maybe it's a match or something else. Um, there you go, there's content aware fill. That's a Photoshop thing. I use that all the time for all kinds of things. Um, yeah, it was a little rough on this image for some reason. It really didn't like the textures on this hoodie. So let's talk a little bit about working with colors, even when we suck at color, as Justin says. All right, so what I like to do, colors and fonts can be difficult to figure out what to do. So when I'm looking for a website or, or an idea for colors, the, uh, the couple places I like to look, my favorite is color.adobe.com, absolute favorite. So this is a really cool spot to build different colors and do different things. The other one I like to use, and I don't know if I try this now, if it's gonna break stuff. So I'll tell you about it. So Adobe Capture is an app that I apparently have to sign into. It's an app by Adobe, Adobe Capture. Check it out, it's a really great resource. All right, that's pulling open right now. I'm getting that logged in. Best way to select subjects. Love the feature to select a whole body. What are other tricks you know about selecting subjects instead of using the pen marquee tool? Okay, we could look at that first. Hey, what's up, Laura? It says, first time on Behance Live. This is awesome. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Stoked to welcome you here. Tonight is a little bit different than my usual flavor of live streams because uh, usually I come a little more prepared. Uh, tonight, signing into my Adobe account uh, on Adobe Capture. Tonight is a little bit more free form from Argentine. That's amazing. Uh, tonight is more free form. This is me just kind of goofing off and um, exploring like what you guys want to talk about instead of me just like talking at you. Like, what do we want to learn tonight? All right, so I don't know if this is gonna work. Let me, whoops. All right, uh, I'm gonna mute my phone. So the audio probably just got weird. Let's see if. Uh, hold that thought for two seconds. This is gonna be a weird camera angle. 
boom, there it is. Okay, cool. So I think you guys can see this now. Um, hey, while we're doing this, check it out. I'm in my office. It's kind of a mess. Got my background and green screen. And, uh, still setting up the kids area over there. But um, yeah, anyway. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, this is Adobe Capture. This is what Adobe Capture looks like. And you can make all kinds of things. You can capture all kinds of creative assets. So a material is like a 3D material that you would apply to 3D shapes like in Adobe Dimension or other things. We can look at type. So I can look at this Stream Deck type here. Let's see if it'll focus. I could take a picture. And uh, tap to select that and say, hey, here's the font. I want you to figure out what it is. And it's going to give me some ideas of what font that might be. So uh, really, really cool way to find different type, different fonts and figure out like what different uh, things might be. We can jump in and make some different shapes and do some cool things with shapes. And I can adjust the slider to um, change the threshold on it. So that's super cool. But let's get into colors real quick because that's kind of where we came from. Let me see if there's anything worth. Okay, well, maybe it's just like you're looking at the screen and you're like, hey, I like these colors. So you can tap the screen to freeze it and then you can drag these anchor points to find colors that you want. And then it's gonna build, you can see across the top, it's building a gradient for me based on these colors. So I can select on the top left, it's got gradients or on the top right, I can choose um, different filters on the photo. Let's go back to gradients and let's change it to color stops instead of gradient. Can you guys tell what I'm doing? Is this is this helpful? Um, just says can hear you fine and nice workspace. Thank you. Uh, we just got into it like a couple weeks ago, so it's, it's still pretty empty and we're still getting everything set up. But um, yeah, we'll get there. All right, so we've got, uh, let's see, got the colors. So, so you can sample colors from anything you, you see or anything that uh, inspires you. Maybe, um, let me just X out of this. So this is my tool chest filled with cables and hard drives and all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, so maybe I like this brown theme and I, again, can tap to freeze it. And I can drag these, uh, what would you call these? Sliders, whatever, to whatever color I want. And I could work with that as a color scheme. I don't really like this color scheme. We should do something for real and design on it. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see what we want to do. Let's just go with it. Let's just tap it to freeze it. Okay. So I've got these color samples here. And then uh, let's see. We'll hit the little check mark, check mark at the bottom. And now I can edit these swatches if I want to or I can save it. So if I hit save, I can publish it straight to color. I can give it a name and then I can tell it where to save it. So where it says save to in the middle. Oh, I wish I had my top down camera on. I don't have it on tonight. Although I could turn it on real quick. That might be helpful. Yeah, that's all right. Um, anyway, so I can save it to select the library and pick my library. So I use libraries all the time for my client work. I'm just going to throw up my personal folder real quick. I hit save. And now I can come back over to um, my desktop computer. It's a laptop, whatever. Oh, you know what else we need to do? We need to get the music back on. Hold that thought. So I'll unplug my phone. Go to my Bluetooth, make sure that's playing. There we go, cool. Um, so now what I can do is if I jump back into any of the software, go to any of the libraries, windows, either in Illustrator or Photoshop or InDesign, go to that library I just saved the color scheme to. And I scroll down and you can see this color theme one is here now. So now I could use this uh, to actually add assets or create a poster or whatever and have it all sync up across the place. So that doesn't really help you like picking a good color theme. So let's, 
let's dive into that a little bit further. Let's unpack that a little bit more. So you could look through all these uh, different tools here in Adobe Color. You could also explore trends up here. So these links kind of blend in with the navigation, but we've got create, explore, trends, and libraries. So you could scroll through here and see something that might be creative or inspirational to you like this. This, um, like if we're just looking at the colors, these colors to me, I would be like, oh, those are cool. But when I see the image you're sampled with, I'm like, oh, for whatever reason, I really like the colors on that. And it's really inspiring. So a lot of times, so one other way that I might do um, is I might take a screenshot. So command shift and the number four gets these crosshairs started on a, on a Mac, at least not on a PC. On a PC, you have to hit that print screen button, click and drag. And before I let go with the mouse, hit the space bar, I can move this box around wherever I want. Okay, but this is where I'm gonna be taking a picture of this. And if I just let go of the mouse now, it'll save the image to my desktop. Like to the actual, like if I go ahead and let it take a picture and we look at my messy desktop here. It's gonna think about it for a second. I can open this up as a file, as a picture file, and it's saved to my desktop as a screenshot. But kind of a time-saving step here. Oh, there it is. It, it saved it right here on my desktop. Uh, but a time-saving step, instead of like letting go of the mouse and letting it just save the file, hit Command-Shift-4, click and drag. And then before you let go, hold down the Command, or I'm sorry, let me think about this. Hold down the Control key, then let go, and it's going to save it to your clipboard instead of to the desktop. So now it's on my clipboard. So now I could jump into, oh, no. There we go. Uh, now I could jump into any file I wanted to. I could be in Photoshop and hit Command V to paste this as an image. Scale it up. And now I can sample these. So I could make shapes. Uh, I'm in Photoshop right now. Hit the letter U. And up here I could select my fill, come to my fill picker, and I could sample from this image. Let me hide my face for a second so you can see. This is just a picture layer right here. This is a flat image, but I can sample these with the eyedropper tool, these colors. Then I could draw a shape and make my own color palette in Photoshop if I wanted to. Hold down Option or Alt, drag down a copy. Let's change this color to maybe a brighter pink. So what I'm doing now, hit the letter I to get my eyedropper tool, select your color. With this layer selected, I just hit Option Delete to quickly fill it. You could also come up here to Edit and Fill. Okay, but what I'm doing now is I'm just trying to build some different colors for me that are inspiring. Uh, you could even go as far, and again, usually I would do this step, usually I would do this process in Illustrator, but I just happen to be hanging out in Photoshop tonight. So what we could do, I need to move my, here, let's, I keep having to hide and bring back my face. All right. Um, so what we could do down here is you could start building out different color swatches. So I could group these together, hold down shift and click command G to group them all together. And I could call this you know, color version one. I could turn these guys off, maybe add a background layer to this. I used to just add a new layer and fill it with a color like this. But lately what I've been doing is making a new layer. So come down here across the bottom and clicking the little uh, the little half circle thing and then adding a solid color. And it adds a solid color layer. And, and what I like about this is as soon as you click any color, oh geez, now it's not gonna do it. I'm obviously doing something wrong. Back to my libraries. So as soon as you click on a color, it immediately fills that layer instead of actually having to hit edit, fill, or option delete. Um, so anyway, I, I like working with layers that way, the color layer, going down this little adjustment layer, going up here to solid color. Anyway, just a little quick tip. All right, so um, let's see. Sorry, that was, that was a long time ago. Justin says, so cool would have been helpful for logo design. Um, assuming maybe you're talking about the Adobe Capture app. I don't know, that was a while ago. Um, Laura says, how persevering. I'm assuming that's me trying to figure out my technology. <laughs> All right, so let's keep going. Let's, um, how else could I do this? Or what else could I do rather? Okay, so there's maybe one look or one idea. 
maybe I make another one. So let's turn that off. I've got the hiccups. Let's jump back over here into Adobe uh, color.adobe.com. You know, maybe these are inspiring. Uh, maybe you're making like a wedding invitation, but you happen to like this architecture color scheme here, or maybe, uh, yeah, I don't know. Lots of ways you can work with this, you guys. Super cool stuff though. So just find something that's inspiring. Something fun to work with. And check this out. So what else we could do? I took a screenshot of the last one, but here's another way to work. You can click, when you hover over it, you can click download as a JPEG. Go ahead and let downloads happen. And what it does, it literally exports a pre-made JPEG file. How cool is that with the hex codes and everything? So you could save these into a folder if you wanted to. Let's say you're working on a client project and uh, let's, let me just show you what I would do. Let me just jump into a uh, design file. I'm gonna make a new project. Let's just call it, what project am I even on right now? 2108 and we'll call this I don't know, whatever the project title is. And I've got these pre-built folders in here when I make a new folder. So basically what I did is up here, this, this new job file already has assets design files and file sent folders in it. They're empty, but that way all of my projects are the same when I start a new project. So these are all my client files that I've been working on recently. Um, and so when I make something new, I already have it built in here. So I've got assets. So under ideas, I could go ahead and stash this color as an option, as an idea. Uh, and I could put a, put this onto like a, a, a mood board or something if I want to share with the client. Justin says, great site. Thanks for the, for the tip. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is come back over here and this time I'm gonna click add to library. And it's been added, for whatever reason, it's been added to this Fab Defense, which is another client that I've been working with. So I gotta jump into their stuff now and fix it. So it threw those colors down here. And what I'm gonna do is right click, let's try that again. And I wanna move it. So I'm gonna come down here and click move to and I'm gonna click on the back arrow up here and I'm gonna move it to my somewhere, Derek Mitchell folder and I'm gonna click move. So it moved all of those. Let's go back to these libraries, go back to Derek Mitchell, green colors, here it is down here, okay? So now I can, okay, so now we're in Illustrator. I don't, you guys probably didn't pick up on that because I've been bouncing around everywhere. So we were in Photoshop and the windows look pretty much identical right now because they're just stacked on top of each other. So in Photoshop, I've got my library open. If I scroll down, there's the color scheme. And if I jump over to Illustrator and I've got my libraries window open, if you don't see that, go to window, come down to libraries and you're going to see all your libraries and the colors are right there waiting for me. So this is a logo for uh, Fab Defense for a client I've been working with on some things. Um, so let's see. Uh, so that's another way you can work with this website is because it's built in with Adobe, you can actually sync it immediately to your library, which is so cool. Such a cool uh, time-saving uh, trick if you're like, man, I just don't know what colors to go for. So give that a try. That'll help, uh, especially come down here to these trends. So the other way that I work, and I've kind of talked about this a little bit in the past, if I come over to Behance and uh, I'm looking for something creative, not sure what I want to do yet, I might come up here and search for things. And maybe we search for, um, I don't know, web design. Let's say you're building a website, you're like, man, I'm just not sure what colors I want to use. Okay, and you start scrolling through and just kind of see if anything stands out to you. Maybe you want some of these bright colors. And if something's inspiring to me, let's go ahead and rip this off into a new tab. I'm in Safari, but this works in Chrome as well. I'm assuming it works in other browsers. Uh, so let's say there's something that's inspiring to you or you're interested in. I quickly go through and I sift through everything. So what I do is I hold on the command key and then I click on the link and you'll notice by doing that, it opens up a new tab. So I can come back to this and look at it later 
But in the meantime, I can keep scrolling through and seeing what might inspire me. So I just hold on command and click, kind of keep scrolling. If anything quickly catches my eye that I want to come back and look at more, I just hit command and click on it. And right now the colors I'm finding are pretty random. I'm not super focused, um, but you could refine that further if you wanted to. You could say something like, um, you know, app web design and get more app related websites. You could, uh, you know, say orange web design. And now you're going to get a lot more websites with orange in them. Okay. So if you, if you've got a brand that you're working with and trying to figure out what color to use, this could help if you know that your client likes the color purple or something, you could refine this by doing that. And then, you know, now I can see, okay, well, what shade of purple do I want more of a lavender or a lilac or more of a plum or, you know, whatever you want to do, hold on command, click on it, open a couple of new browser windows. Okay. Then once I feel like I've got a good representation of options for me or good ideas, now I can click through each one of these and maybe scroll through and see if there's more that will help me kind of unpack this a little bit and see if there's more inspiration. Does that make sense? Just kind of scroll through. And so like, here's an example where these oranges are very subtle. So what I might do to build out my own color scheme around this, command shift four, quickly take a screenshot of this, hold down control, copy it to my clipboard. You could also right click and save the image sometimes. In this case, I can't do that. Uh, you might be able to drag it off onto your desktop or hit that print screen button if you're on a PC. So this time I'm gonna jump into Illustrator and make a new document. And it doesn't really matter, but I'll go ahead and make it a web-based document. And I'll just click OK, click Create. Command V to paste that screenshot that I took. And right now, all I wanna do is just grab a few different sections of this. Get those screenshots. And just drop them in here. That's probably enough for this one, I suppose. All right, so there's one idea. Let's come over here, see if there's anything else. This is what originally kind of caught my attention. It's pretty bold. So the last couple of times I've been taking a screenshot, my mouse disappears. So I hit Command Shift 4 again to start my screenshot. And this time I'm just gonna hit the Escape key. And then for whatever reason, my mouse cursor comes back. I don't know if it's because I'm live streaming. I don't know if it's an app update or something, but just so you guys know, in case it happens to you. All right, so let's just kind of Sorry, my things are getting in the world. It's getting a little buggy. Sorry, guys. Command Shift 4. There we go. Take a screenshot of that. I guess on my computer's defense, I haven't restarted it in like four days. <laughs> I usually do a better job and I make fun of my wife for doing that. Uh, leaving her computer on for like a month without restarting and then everything just basically crashes on itself. And lately now I've been doing the same trick because I get all kinds of windows open. I'm like, oh, I can't close this yet. I'm developing something. You guys still hanging with me? Are you guys still interested in what we're doing here? I can bounce off of colors. We were going to talk about... There's something else. Oh, yeah, making selections, I think Justin said from earlier. Best way to select objects without using the pen or the marquee tool. Maybe we'll get to that. We'll see how we do on the stream. I guess we can, let's just keep moving on. This is plenty. Okay, so what I would do, or what you could do, here's some inspiration. Um, and you could make, so I'm just gonna get the rectangle tool, the letter M. Let's just sample this orange. 
let's make Illustrator bigger so it's not confusing if it's Illustrator or Photoshop. And then, uh, okay, so I've got a square drawn. Now I'm holding the Option key. And I guess I should clarify, I've got the Move tool selected up here by hitting the letter V. I guess the Selection tool in Illustrator. It's the Move tool in Photoshop. Letter V, it's selected. Now I'll hold on the Option key to click and drag, and then as I get started, I'll throw the Shift key in there as a modifier so it stays like perfectly in line with the next object. Then I'll let go of everything, and then I'll hit Command D to duplicate that step and, and repeat it. So Command D to dupe it a bunch of times, okay? Um, okay, so we've got those three here. So I could say, hey, actually, let's do that again. Select it. Option, click, drag, and then Command D a couple times. Okay, so now I'm gonna do is hit the letter I to get my eyedropper tool, and I'm gonna sample this orange. I'm gonna come up here and hit Option to paste that orange. Sample the lighter one, hold on Option and paste it. Let's sample, this might be the same kind of orange, this light color, sample it, Option, paste. Maybe we'll grab this tan color in here as well. Okay, so that could be a color scheme. Maybe we add red into this. Okay, so this could be one color scheme based on these images. Do the same thing, this option drag up here, eyedropper tool, sample some reds. And I like to start with the darker stuff. So maybe we'll make this one totally black. And I like to do a rich black. A rich black, for me, uh, what that means is if you just print, if you if you have a printer and you're, and you're oh, here's what we could do. Uh, this button. Yes. Okay. So this giant printer over here has, shoot, never mind. That's not going to work. It has like a million ink tanks. It's got like six ink tanks in there. You can kind of see them, uh, there. So it's got like light blue, dark blue, magenta, light pink, uh, yellow, black. It's got a bunch of different ink tanks. Where are we looking? And and what it does, Rich Black will mix all of those inks to make it as dark as possible. But if it's just one black, it's going to look faded and not look as good. So what we want to do is we want to create that Rich Black here in the software. So we want to say, hey, the cyan ink, cyan ink tank, we're going to put it at 60%. Magenta, we're going to put it at 40 Yellow, we're going to put it at 40 black, we're going to put it at hundred percent and it's going to make it like mix all those inks down at the same time and make it really, really rich versus if we just make it at a hundred percent and we don't have any other colors, it's super subtle, but as we zoom in, you can see the hundred percent black looks kind of faded and nasty, right? But the rich black looks really rich and nice. Um, <laughs> that's funny. Justin says, been there, been making fun of his wife for not shutting down her computer, but do the same thing all the time. That's funny. Um, okay, let's get back. I got distracted. I was trying to think of the best way to guys show you this. And I was thinking I could pull an ink tank out, but it's whatever, whatever. We'll keep going. Okay. So I like to work with the dark colors first. Let's get my eyedropper tool. Let's sample some more. reds from this that's probably enough color for this. oh and then we could do white so if i'm going to do white as a sample what i like to do is i'll make it the fill will be white but i'll add a stroke to it let's go over to our stroke let's change the thickness down a little bit just so it's kind of subtle so that's how i like to represent white in my color swatches okay and then uh, let's do this last one. Whoops, let's drag these over here. Rotate, oh, let's copy it first. Option, rotate, group it. So the other thing too, they don't have to be squares, right? Like you could, you could make them wider swatches if you want to, right? So let's go ahead and sample this cream, white, we have whatever is this like a pink it looks like delete these guys 
Okay, so there's a swatch sample for this website. And you can see I'm kind of playing all over the place, right? Like you don't have to keep it on the canvas either because this is all when you save this file, <laughs> which I haven't even saved yet. But when you save this file, uh, you know, you open it back up and just because the artboard and the canvas is here doesn't mean you have to stay there. You can play all over the place if you want to. Um, it's just if you export it, whatever's inside of this canvas is what gets exported. Okay, so purple. This lilac, lavender thing. And we got this color here. So another tool I like to use when I'm working with color is called SIP, S-I-P, SIP. And uh, I think I got it in the App Store on Apple. I'm not sure if you can get it in the App Store anymore or if you have to buy it directly on their website. But it adds this little tool up here in your in your bar and click on it and you can sample any color from anywhere on your screen, whether you have Photoshop open or not. What I love about this is when you click on any color and it samples it as a hex code, it also tells you what the name of the color is. So this is literally called faded red. So if I wanted to get all fancy and name colors for say to show to a client or something and pretend like I would have known the name of that to begin with, which I wouldn't have, but let's pretend, uh, condense, let's track it out. Okay. So we got faded red. And I just hit command D to duplicate that after I brought down a copy. Let's go back to sip. Let's sample this thing right here. This is blue chalk. All right, then blue chalk east side really these are like some crazy names all right cherry pie this looks nothing like cherry pie all right but we're gonna go for it boom there you go so now we've got color names as well so kind of a fun way to make your samples if you want uh, all right, let's keep going. So we've got some colors made and there we go. That's my approach to finding colors, whether it's jumping into uh, Adobe capture on your mobile device or jumping into color.adobe.com or jumping into like Behance or some other portfolio website and copying images that you're inspired by to pull the colors from for those. What's up? Rob is in the chat, everybody. Everybody say hello to Rob Magnell. He's back representing Canada. Saskatoon, right? Right? Is that right? Or am I confusing things now? I'm sorry. Looks like there's about a 15 to 20 second delay. All right. That's right. Rob from Saskatoon, Canada. Welcome to the chat. I wonder if it's colder here than, so Rob, I was telling everybody it was 15 degrees overnight, uh, Fahrenheit, not Celsius. It's like minus nine Celsius. So I'm wondering, is Canada where you're at? Is it that cold there yet? Or are you still, is it still warmer? All right, let's keep going. So another question we had earlier from Justin was, the best way to, what, what is the best way to select objects? Love the feature to select a whole body. What are other tricks you know to select objects instead of using the pen marquee tool? So when he's talking about like selecting the whole body or somebody, uh, let's jump back into Photoshop. We were in Illustrator here. Jump back over to Photoshop. Uh, let's find an image. So now I'm in Envato Elements. We're gonna go down to Photos. Let's just see if anything pops up. I don't even know what to search for. Let's see, oh, this. Well, that's gonna be, actually, this is gonna be a great test. I'm gonna download this photo of a tourist with a dog in the forest. Let's go ahead and uh, lob this over into Photoshop. Okay, 
if it works on this, I'm gonna be super impressed. Look at all these sticks and all this stuff in the background. There's a little bit of a bokeh, which is like the background's blurry just a little bit, which could be enough to make it work. But here's what we're talking about. So what we're gonna do, go to properties in Photoshop. If you don't see this, it go up here to window and then come down to properties, okay? And then the next thing is when you scroll down, you're not gonna see like, there's a bunch of stuff in here, but we're not gonna find what we're looking for. And the reason why is when you open up a layer in Photoshop, typically that first layer is locked. You see this little lock icon? There's two ways that I know of, or there's, there's two ways that I use the most. One is just simply double click on it and then click okay. And then that lock goes away. And then when I scroll down, you'll notice these quick actions now show up. The other way, I'm gonna hit un undo command Z, is I typically leave that background layer alone. And then, what's up, Bernie? Hey, you're in the chat. Uh, good to see you over there. Okay, so then the other, uh, the other way, the other method is I take this layer and hit command J to jump cut that into a new layer. So I've got the original, in case I mess anything up, I can always go back to it. And then I've got the main layer here, or not the main layer, the copy. Uh, so, now that this lock icon is gone, it's not a smart object. That's the other thing. If it's a smart object, this also won't work. Scroll down under the properties window and you'll see we have these quick actions to remove the background or select the subject. It's kind of the same thing. If I select the subject, it literally just makes a selection, but doesn't Siri, really. I couldn't hear what you said. Every time, every time Siri tries to like jump in and say hi on the stream. Um, okay, so I made it. Wow, that actually did a very good job. It looks like. So it selected the subject, but it didn't do anything with that selection yet. So if you wanted to, lots of things we could do. It's Photoshop, right? But we could just quickly click on this mask button down here. And it looks like nothing happened, but don't forget we copied this layer. So it, you're not gonna see anything. So one of two ways, just turn off the layer below it or add a new layer in between them and fill it with a color of some kind, whoops. Okay, um, this is maybe kind of a tough color to tell if the selection is any good. So we could do a bright color. Wow, this, given the image we started with, this this is a, an impressive selection. I mean, it's nearly there. Uh, but the question from Justin was like, how do we do other selections besides that method? But I wanted to make sure that you guys knew that method at the very least, because it's such a huge time saver. All right, <clears throat> so, the other thing we could do is delete that mask. This time, instead of clicking select subject, I'm just going to straight up click remove background. One click, it's going to remove the background and Photoshop is incredible. Look at that. Okay, so we could refine this selection a little bit. Um, but let's talk about some other ways to make selections. And honestly, Justin, I, I probably should have practiced this. <laughs> Uh, there's some really incredible ways to make selections and I'm honestly a little bit rusty right now on what those would be because uh, typically the way that I make selections is either that and then if I get a selection tool so command click on this mask to load the selection again because I had deselected it hit any of my selection tools with letter M or the letter L for your marquee tool or your lasso tool and up here you'll see in the options bar the select and mask menu and click on that and now I could come in here and refine the selection further. Okay. Uh, grab this guy. I kind of paint over the top of this holding down option to remove things that I don't like. Okay. And you can go through and you can refine what the selection is when you're all done, when you're all happy with whatever it is in this case, it, I didn't really do too much to it. There's a few options here that are helpful. One to pay attention to is down here what the output is. So right now it's just gonna output the selection as a selection, but you could output it as a layer mask, as a new layer, as a new layer with a layer mask, as a whole new document, or as a new document with layer mask. So there's a few different options here where this becomes really helpful. Let's say you have a lot of color cast. Color cast is when the background or whatever you're near casts that color onto you. So I'm next to a green screen behind me, so it cuts out my head. Um, 
instead of it being like a big video here. Uh, but what if I get real close to it? Um, I don't know, you can't really tell because the way the camera focuses, but it casts green on me a little bit. So let's say you're trying to uh, fix that on a photo like this. Um, you could go through and you could clean that up a little bit. So right here, this output settings has this checkbox that says decontaminate colors. So when you click on that, it's gonna look at the edges. Let me turn that off again. See what it does with his hair. It's really noticeable along the edge of this hair right here. Let me zoom in a little bit, and make it more obvious. When I click decontam <clears throat> excuse me, decontaminate colors, it, for lack of better words, decontaminates the colors. It makes it so there's not like a harsh um, edge around it where maybe the background was a much different color. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Anyway, but when you do that, notice the output changed to new layer with layer mask. And the reason why, if I click okay, and I come back to this and I turn off my mask, look at how messed up this image looks now. What it did is it added all these extra pixels around his head and it was destructive too. This image now has that like baked into it. If I turn this layer off, the one below it, you'll notice none of that junk is in there. But if I turn the one on top back on, it did all this kind of stuff to make it so that way that mask selection was cleaner, basically. Okay. And I can come back on this mask, get my brush tool with a nice soft brush. I could clean this up further if I wanted to. Painting with black as the foreground to hide or white to reveal. Just kind of going through and maybe cleaning up these edges a little bit. So that's one way to work. There's a million ways to work. I'm just kind of showing you guys what comes to mind and how I work. If this is helpful, I hope it's helpful. Um, that this feature I feel like is in the last like three or four versions of Photoshop, Bernie. Um, it's gotten better every time as far as how it selects the pixels, but the ability to do that, I don't remember when the first one was added and like, see here, I see his nose is kind of missing some stuff. So let's paint with white on the mask layer to bring back that detail that got lost. The lips here a little bit too. So you can get infinitely picky on stuff like this. But again, a reminder, this is the image we started with. And for the most part, Photoshop did all the heavy lifting to make that selection. So there are some new ways to make selections in Photoshop in the latest version. Let's get a fresh layer of this guy up top. And I'm a little rusty with these because I don't personally use them very much yet. So if you hit the letter W, you get the magic wand tool, right? You're probably used to that or the quick selection tool even, which was added a few versions ago. The quick selection tool is kind of like a magnetic lasso. As I click and drag, it tries to detect the pixels around it and makes the selection automatically. Really, really handy. Pretty darn accurate too. Like it does a really good job of making just a selection. If you go too far, hold on option, and then click and drag to remove it, the extra, okay? It does a pretty good job. Like, especially like this, this image is kind of a terrible, on purpose, a terrible, image to try and make a selection like this, but you can see Photoshop still does a really great job of, of figuring that out. So this is the, uh, I forget what this tool is even called, quick selection tool. Uh, so you can kind of see in the menu, like exactly how it works. Cool. Uh, newer to maybe the last version and now this version is the object selection tool. So the way this guy works, you can choose the object selection tool and you just literally click and drag over the top of an object and it senses what's in focus uh, and it detects the edges and makes a selection. So let's see how it does on this image with all this extra garbage around it. Oh, did I miss that? So look, I'm checking the chat and Behance. Oh, wow. Okay. Dude, I totally missed your post. So Justin says, um, he says this is too cool. I'm colorblind and was a graphic designer for five years. Wow. Would send photos to my girlfriend so she could tell me what color things were. Got really good at RGB and CMYK. That is incredible. I had a student, uh, I used to teach at the local college here for a while and I had a student who was colorblind. <laughs> 
and he was making a logo. It was for a bakery and it was like a loaf of bread. And I remember it being like green, like moldy green. And I was looking at it, I was like, that's, that's cool. But why, why is the bread green? And he's like, dude. And he kind of like went like this. He like whispered around. He's like, dude, I'm colorblind. And I had no idea. He was an amazing, like he, he literally could have been an illustrator for Disney. He was incredible uh, with sketching and drawing cartoons and stuff. Uh, but same thing, he was colorblind. And so, um, yeah, some of these tools also helped him. And also, I don't know if you guys noticed this. Um, I know we're jumping way back into the chat. We're talking about color. Uh, on color adobe.com so the first time i went here here let me let me try it oh it's not going to do it now let me um if i turn on i've got a vpn but as soon as i turn that on it's probably going to mess up my stream uh how about let's open up chrome i've got a bajillion windows and i can't find it Oh, it's still opening. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, let's go to color.adobe.com. Hopefully, since this is the first time on this browser, it'll see. Give me. Oh, shoot. All right. Well. There we go. That's what I was trying to show you. So it says what's new. So it's got a contrast checker and a colorblind safe themes section. That's super cool. So apparently 8% of people in the world have colorblindness. Adobe colors accessibility tools can design safe themes. Wow. So deuteranopia, protonopia, and tritonopia to help you ensure that your experiences can be more inclusive. So cool. All right. Who knew? There you go, Justin. Um, all right. Let's jump back over to selections. And there we go. Photoshop finally figured it out. But look at um, that is amazing. So we used this object selection tool. And I just clicked and dragged around it. Now I could add more to this too. If I hold on the shift key and then I click over the dog's face here, I, I'm really curious if this is gonna work. This really will probably, oh my gosh, look at that, it's amazing. So it really is able to sense the pixels and the focus because these colors are very similar on the top of the dog's head with the branches in the background. And it added that no problem. So that's a great tool to probably add to how you make selections if you guys haven't used that yet. Uh, my my favorite tool. I mean, th these are these are so incredible. They're almost flawless. With the kind of work that I do, I usually have to use the pen tool. And the reason why, I work with stuff where those selections are almost indiscernible, uh, and and I use the pen tool. So just so you guys know, I know. Justin was asking for other ways besides the pen tool, but here's how you would do selections with the pen tool. Uh, so first you gotta select the pen tool, hit the letter P. And then up here, we don't wanna draw out the shape, we wanna use a path. So let's change this to a path mode. And then a couple things to notice up here. We've got this little, these options in the options bar. So just check those out, kind of be aware of what they are, but specifically, I wanna make sure that I've got exclude overlapping shapes is selected. And then when you make a path, like the fast, I'm just gonna do a couple, like I'm just gonna draw a quick path, like it doesn't really matter. So I go on my path, once I've got that, we've got a paths window and you'll see this path here. So I could either command click on that and it's gonna load it as a selection. I hit command D, it goes away and you're like, oh, where's that path, I just made it. Well, if I come back here, it looks like it's totally gone, right? If, we're, if, you, do, if you happen to have a layers window open, but if you jump back over into paths, it's still there. So I gotta do is click on it and it loads the path again. I could select it with my direct selection tool, the letter A, and I could grab these anchor points if you need to make modifications, which is specifically why I love the pen tool because I can make things exact. And if I screw up, I can just quickly nudge things and get it exactly where I want it to be. 
Then again, you can either command click on the thumbnail to load that selection or with the pen tool selected, right click, go down to make selection. So now I've got a couple options here. I can say feather it. So I could right now I could set it to zero if I want it to be a super hard edge, which some of the products I work with are metals. And so they need to be like metal is obviously a hard edge. I want it to be a crispy hard edge. I don't want any blur to it. Or I could feather the heck out of this. Let's call it 50 or maybe even a hundred pixels. And down here I can make a new selection or add to a selection. So let's go ahead and make the selection. I'll click okay. And it's feathered it now. I could get my pen tool and I could make more selections, right click, make selection. And this time I could choose either a new selection. So this top selection would go away and it would just be this new path, or I could click add to selection. So now it's going to be this circle and then add this circle to it or subtract from selection or intersect. Okay. So subtract would be, it's going to cut away from this bottom chunk or intersect would be, it just leaves where the two shapes are intersected. Okay. So these are cool little options here that really easy to overlook. I'll click. Okay. And now I'll cut that away. I come back to my layers and maybe I make a new layer and let's just fill it with a color for now. Command delete to fill it with white. You can see the selection, how feathered that is. And so basically I just made a new layer and it's like a little cloud shape on top. How would you actually use this besides making little cloud shapes, which is not what we intended? Well, the way I would use it is let's say, you know, I want this backpack to be flawless on the selection, even though it's sitting on top of a pretty busy background. So I might grab that pen tool, I might get it nice and close and click once, and then just start clicking And by clicking once it sets a point. If you click and drag, it modifies, uh, we call it a Bezier curve, but the handle modifies where that curve is going to go. So it takes a lot of getting used to a little bit of practice. If I hold on the option key. I can break it. So instead of it being a smooth curve, it'll be a hard point and then go to the next, uh, next spot here. So like, especially right here, let's say this, this zipper pull, I guess it's a strap. Uh, anyway, let's say this was really getting lost in the background and my selection tools just weren't cutting it. I could come in here and like really refine exactly how I wanted the selection to be. So this is, this is a lot of times how I make my selections, even though to do it right, it just takes forever, but then you get perfect selections. And sometimes, for example, let's say uh, I want to make sure the edge is perfect. I might cheat in a little bit on this. Let's just do that. So you can kind of see, okay. And then uh, to speed things up, we're just going to, you know, get it close, right? We're just gonna, whatever. Boom. Okay. So we have our selection again. I could right click and go to make selection or I can come over here to paths and just command click to load that selection. Well, shoot, two things happen. One is it feathered it again. It feathered the selection. And then also there's this little piece here that needs to be cut out. So let's just go ahead and deselect it. Bring my work path back zoom in here. And with my pen tool, I'm just going to click and drag, make sure this, this layer, this path is still loaded. I'm just going to come in here and make a selection. And now when I command, actually let's, let's, uh, right click, make selection. And this time I'm going to change my feathering to zero. Click. Okay. Oh, I didn't have that one selected too. There we go. Now I can command click and they're both selected. So now if I needed to cut that out, the selections are perfect. And then the last, remember where I cheated in right here on this bag. And because the bag is fabric, maybe you want it to be a little softer. So I could have either feathered that edge, but then that might've let some extra colors bleed in. What, what else you can do is delete this mask and just apply it. So it's literally just the shape. So now what I could do is bring my blur tool into play here. So over here on the sidebar, we have the blur tool. Click on that, uh, adjust the strength fairly high, bring it down a little bit, and then I can blur just the edge and soften up just that edge, which this might be difficult to see. Let's do a bright color. So there's some more contrast here. So you see down here where this edge is really hard. So you can take that blur tool on the edge. Oh, we're on the wrong layer. There we go. 
and just kind of soften up that edge a little bit to make it look more realistic. Okay. So it's pretty labor intensive, but if you're like trying to get the, you know, you're trying to really make it look good and you've got a difficult background you're working with, sometimes this is the best approach. So I hope that helps somebody. That was a lot. We could keep going, but let's just check in with the chat and see how we're doing. Interesting. Talk about color blindness being the most common in men. And the disparity between green and blue being the largest problem area. Interesting. I didn't know that. Huh. Yeah. So Rob uh, uses a ton of clipping paths when close cropping and creating ads. The joy of clipping paths is you can, if you screw up, you can correct the path without losing any content. It's true. It's good. All right, guys. What else do you guys want to learn? Or is it bedtime? Almost bedtime. We're getting close. <laughs> uh, oh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> so I am my wife's reminder list. I don't know if you guys can relate. Like there's literally a reminder app on your phone, but she texts me things that she wants to remember. So usually what I do, like she'll say, Hey, remind me this. And then I'll immediately text right back and I'll say, Hey, remember this. And she's like, that's no help. But I'm like, but you'll remember it. Um, <laughs> she's sending me hilarious texts right now about things to remember anyway. All right. On that note, um, yeah, that's okay. So we talked about colors. We talked about selections. There's some really incredible, if you want to get real crazy with selections, check out how to make selections with channels. There's some pretty cool stuff here. I used to do that when I was before Photoshop was incredible at selecting hair. We used to use channels. And to be honest, I don't remember how to get into it right now. So we're going to not do that. All right. <clears throat> Check it in. How you guys doing? How's things? Such a random image to be up on the screen right now. It's all good. Oh, here's what we could do. I mean, let's, let's just push this a little further. The selection's pretty rough and brutal, but let's go back to those libraries where we saved colors, travel concepts. I don't know, let's build something. Uh, letter U to get my rectangle tool. I'm just gonna click and drag like a little bench type thing here. And let's go grab that color library and let's grab that green. Let's throw it down a layer. This could be really terrible, but we're just gonna, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just fooling around you guys. So, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't get to fool around with stuff very often. Usually it's like, Hey, a client needs me to send this to them like five minutes ago and it's late. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know. We could do something like this. I don't know, guys. I'm just making stuff up right now. This is very much not the style that I usually would do. I'm just having fun, staying fresh. Speaking of having fun, and staying fresh and creatively inspired. My wife and I just made a course. It is so close to ready to go. It's a creative challenge. It's a seven day creative challenge. So stay tuned for that. Uh, we'll, if you wanna know, it, it'll be launching live in the vault. Again, to get to the vault, it's on my website. If you go to DerekMitchell.com and then click on courses and then click here to join, check that out. Um, it, it, sorry, my brain just melted. There's like 10 things I was going to tell you. Let me back that up a step. Um, that course will be in the vault. It'll be on my website. It'll also be on Skillshare and Udemy. So check those out if you want to learn more about it. 
Uh, and, and basically it's my wife and I, every day we're doing a creative prompt. So one day it's like, Hey, thanks for the thumbs up over on Behance. I see you guys. Um, I appreciate you. If you haven't had a chance yet, smash that thumbs up button. Uh, let me know if you guys like this live stream. Um, anyway, we do a creative challenge. So every day, like one day might be doodling. The next day is photography. There's painting, there's mixed media. There's four. Oh, what were the other ones? I don't know. There's like two or three others. Um, and helping you stay fresh. And so we did this because a lot of times I find myself constantly, uh, you know, basically we're just spending all day on the computer, like doing digital art stuff. And so just kind of reigniting some of those artistic, um, what's the right word? Like basically just like not doing something for a client, but doing this for yourself because you love it. Right. And just kind of staying creatively challenged and motivated. So anyway, all that to say, huge tangent. Uh, this design is not necessarily something I would usually do, but I'm working with this color scheme and this random photo that I got and just kind of making something up. Um, and, and kind of showing you how you could take elements of different things. So this color scheme came from Adobe color and also could have pulled it in through my phone through the Adobe capture app. Right. And then kind of mashing it together. Maybe, uh, something else too. Maybe you're not sure Here's a random tip because we're kind of doing random tips tonight, doing some Q and a, um, so another tip you could do if we go to window and we go to, um, layer comps, this is kind of a cool little hidden gem. If you haven't found this before layer comps, we are in Photoshop. So right now I can click the plus sign and it's going to remember, and I can name this, whatever I want right now, it's just layer comp one, but I could name it something if it was like you know, travel or blue or whatever, you know, made sense. I can do the visibility or the position or the appearance or the layer comp selection for smart objects. You can choose what applies to this. I'll click okay. And boom, now I've got a layer comp one. Now I could turn this off or maybe let's just duplicate it. Command J to jump cut a copy, turn that off. And now maybe we're going to change this to a different font, maybe rock salt or something. And that obviously makes it look a lot different. Sample the same color and I'm just gonna make it a tiny bit darker. Send it back a few layers. I get super focused on doing stuff like this. Um, I feel like my computer's getting angry. I don't know. Random. Maybe we mask out. Whoa. Undo. Maybe we add a layer mask to this command, click on the dude and then come up here and paint the black brush to hide this part behind his head. Boom. Sorry, my computer's getting a little bit buggy. There we go. All right, so there's a random idea. Okay, so we did all that stuff and I could hit the little plus here again on the layer comps window and this could be layer comp two. And now all I have to do is click on layer comp one and it remembers which layers were on and where things were from layer comp one. And then I click on layer comp two and it goes back to that. And then what I could do is come up here to file down to export. And I could say layer comps to files or layer comps to PDF. So layer comps to files would export separate images, whether it's a JPEG or a PNG for each layer comp. Layer comps to a PDF would just put all of them into one PDF. So if I click on that, 
and give it a prefix name. So let's just call this, I don't know, travel vibes. I don't know. Let's tell this to go to that new folder we made. Uh, design. Go to the stream. Now this is where, so we made this file earlier in the stream, right? This Adobe Color Behance stream. So file sent. If this was just a comp that I'm about to send to clients, I put it in my comps folder. I'll click open. Uh, or if it's like the final file, I'll stick it in finals. And that way I know what the most recent version was or what went to press. So we'll do it as a JPEG. You could do all these other options. Hit run and it's gonna spit out a file for each layer comp. Boom, all done, it's pretty fast. Let's jump over here, go back to that project folder. Let's go to file sent to the comps. Okay, so here's something else. It only did the one and here's why. Let's go ahead and delete that. Let's go back to our project here. So when you go to file, export, layer comps to files. There's a checkbox in here, right here. It's kind of hidden. It says selected layer comps only. So right here, this is the only selected layer comp. So if you had a bunch of them, you could command click and like select just a couple if you wanted to, or turn that off. And now it's going to do all the layer comps, whether they're selected or not. So now if I run this again, it's going to do both versions of this. Jump back over into Finder, and now I've got layer comp one as a JPEG, and then layer comp two as a JPEG. It looks like the stream's getting pretty choppy, guys. I might have to shut this down here pretty soon. All right. All right, let's go back to the chat real quick. Uh,. Oh my goodness, you guys have been busy in the chat. I'm sorry I missed you. I was super focused. <laughs> uh, Justin says, almost bedtime, Derek. Yeah, it definitely is. This has been amazing. You are welcome. Thanks for jumping in, Rob. Or actually, Justin said that. Thank you for jumping in, Justin. Looks like the stream's getting super glitchy too, so everything needs to be shut down. Um, Justin says, well, almost time to work. My next call's in 15 minutes. Um, thanks for jumping in. You're probably gone by now. Uh, Rob says, Dan always used to tell him, if I can teach a colorblind man to color correct, I can teach you. That's hilarious. Uh, Bernie asks, can you make a signature on Photoshop or do you need to use Adobe Capture? That's a great question. Um, man, it looks like my stream is barely hanging on right now. It looks like it's glitching. Uh, okay, so uh, Bernie, can I make a signature in Photoshop or do you need to use Adobe Capture? Um, both. And when you say signature, like I've got my signature logo that looks like this. Um, is that what you're talking about when you say making a signature? So to make that, I actually used a Sharpie marker, drew it out, and then I brought it into Photoshop. Man, I have a YouTube video about that somewhere. Let me see if I can find that. That might be more helpful. Um, so if we go to youtube.com slash Derek Mitchell. Hey, we're live. Uh, let's go to videos. Let's search for um, Sharpie. That might get me there. Yes. Check this out, Bernie. Episode 11, create a logo with Sharpies and Adobe Illustrator. This is from three years ago. I've come a long ways and I look much younger there. <laughs> Um, the audio is going to be terrible on this, but it's all good. So check that out. Uh, I show how, how to create a signature logo with Sharpies in Adobe Illustrator. Check that out. Good stuff. Um, thanks Rob. Rob says, keep watching Derek. He has such super helpful tips and is often willing to help out if you have questions. Absolutely. I love it when you guys have questions because it gives me something to do. Otherwise I feel like I'm making stuff up and don't know what to talk about. Um, yes, absolutely. Justin says, do you want to make a handwritten signature? I would take a photo with my phone, load it into illustrator and then trace a signature. Um, 
that's a hundred percent a great way to go. <laughs> yeah, I definitely need to shut down the computer soon. Okay. Um, yeah, such a good question. Justin, you're still hanging out. You got to call like any second now. All right, guys, I think I'm going to call it and shut it down. I can tell the stream is getting, I want to stay and hang out with you guys so bad. This has been so much fun. Um, but I can tell it's about to start. Oh, good news. So, um, my wife got a new computer and so she used to use my older computer. Uh, but now she's got a new one. So that older computer still around. And I think I'm going to use that as a streaming engine for this thing. And then that way my new computer could just focus on what it does best, which is Photoshop instead of trying to do two things at once. So hopefully, and yes, James, what's up, James, you are new to the chat. Welcome. James says, can I ask a Photoshop question? Of course, please do. Um, anyway, what I was saying is I, I want my stream to be as flawless as possible. So that way when I'm answering these questions, it's not frustrating to listen to. So hopefully you guys, uh, hopefully it's been good and love hanging out with you guys. Um, good night, Justin. Thank you. We'll see you later. Uh, also, I think there's about a 20 to 30 second delay on the stream. It looks like. So, um, sorry, I'm just kind of hanging out, uh, to see if James has a question about Photoshop. He was going to ask, um, Bernie, did that help you with the signature thing? Checking out this YouTube video that I, I kind of talk in depth about how I made that. I know I've done a couple streams. Um, I could do another one on, on, on how to do a signature logo. My, my best recommendation is to use a Sharpie on a piece of like white printer paper, take a picture of it. Maybe I'll live stream about that. Let me, let me make a note to myself, to my wife. <laughs> Remind, whoa. Remind me to make a signature logo live stream. Cool. All right. <clears throat> so Bernie says, yes, that was helpful. Thank you. I'm glad that helped. Hey guys, uh, if, if that was helpful tonight, uh, would love it if you give me a thumbs up on the stream. And then also don't forget, you can follow me if you're watching on Behance. What that'll do is you'll be able to see some of my portfolio works, like when I post new stuff. Um, but more importantly, when I go live, you'll get like a little, just a quick notification. You can ignore it if you want to, or tap that link. And then that way you can jump right in when I go live and never miss a beat. And then I, again, I love answering questions. So if you have a question and I'm live, feel free to ask. And, and I love talking about all this kind of stuff. Uh, James says, this is my first time using Photoshop, had a senior photo shoot and have rings around the eyes that I cannot remove using Photoshop. What's the easiest way to remove the dark rings? Okay. Um, I'll jump into it. I'll keep going as long as my computer doesn't like totally tank on me here. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to pexels.com and I'm going to search for a portrait just to see if there's something in there. Senior, actually the problem, you know, it's going to be wrong. All these photos are going to already be corrected. So there's, oh, Hey, there we go. This actually might work. Um, this photo is really dark though. This is a different kind of senior. <laughs> um, not what I was expecting, but we can we can play with this here. All right, this this could be a good one. We'll just we'll just play with this one. Oh, another photo from Anna. Thank you, Anna, for the photo. All right, so let's open this up, and keep in mind there's a hundred ways to do anything in Photoshop or Lightroom, like lots of ways to get the same effect or similar effect. So I'm just going to show you what comes to mind first. Um, but what I'm going to do is move us in here and hit command J to jump cut this and make a copy. And one of the first things I would do is I'd go through and kind of do some color correcting. So if you come up here to filter and you come down to camera raw filter, you can open up the camera raw filter <laughs> and you have all these photographic um, 
adjustments you can make from temperature to exposure. And so you can really go through and dial and dial in your photo. And, and you know, in this case, I'm looking at the shadows behind her, her hair here behind her neck. Maybe you want to make those darker, excuse me, or maybe you want to brighten up those shadows or maybe down here, scroll down a little bit under effects. You can't see it. My head's in the way. Under effects, we can add some vignetting if you want to add some vignetting and make it more dramatic or whatever. Um, you know, a lot of different things you can do, but whatever you, whatever adjustments you do here, once you're done and ready and have it how you like it, you can click OK. Or maybe you want like a trendy Instagram, right? Maybe bump down the vibrance just a touch and bump down the saturation just a touch so it kind of looks a little bit faded. Play with the dehaze and the clarity. Have fun with it. Okay, we'll click OK. And I can turn this layer on and off and you can see the before and the after. So we just messed with like literally just a couple slides. But the question from James is uh, how to see your photo shoot has rings around the eyes that cannot remove using Photoshop. So depending on how extreme that is, you know, it might be difficult. Lots of ways to work. I'm gonna hit command J again to jump cut a copy because it's, you know, it's easy to do in case you screw anything up. Hit the letter S to get the stamp tool. It looks like this over here in the sidebar. Okay, clone stamp tool. Um, and what you could do is sample and, and maybe turn down the flow up here in the options bar a tiny bit, maybe turn down the opacity a tiny bit. Uh, that way it looks a little more natural. Click over here to sample maybe part where the skin looks like you want it. And then just kind of paint over the top and kind of blend it a little bit. One way to work. Uh, also make sure up here where it says sample, all layers is selected or current layer. Just pay attention where you're sampling from. Okay. Another way to work <clears throat> is hit the letter. Okay. So th this was a stamp tool, letter S, hit the letter J. And we want to go down to the either spot healing brush tool or the healing brush tool. They both, you know, kind of do the same thing. Um, spot healing, you could come down here and, and we got this little brush we can kind of click on spots that you want to go away or maybe it's like the ring around your eyes or the wrinkles like you're talking about you just click and drag and that that'll kind of heal itself and it'll it'll help it blend a little bit better okay uh so this is the spot healing brush the healing brush um you have to option hold on option and sample where it's healing from and then paint and it's gonna sample and heal from wherever you selected. So sometimes that's helpful. And I'm making my brush larger and smaller by hitting the letter uh, on my keyboard next to the letter P. I've got the left and the right bracket. So left bracket makes the brush smaller, right bracket makes the brush bigger. And I'm just tapping that on my keyboard to make it bigger or smaller. Uh, okay, so we've got the Healing brush tool. So like, you know, maybe you're trying to heal these eyes. So maybe you sample from the other side if you can, and maybe that's too dark, but find kind of where it might help to sample the skin that kind of closely matches the color you're going for. Or back to that spot healing and you just kind of click and drag and it just kind of starts to heal itself. Okay. Or maybe like this line right here, maybe you want this to go away. Just click and drag. And sometimes you get lucky and it works really well the first time. Sometimes you kind of have to finesse it a little bit. Okay. And sometimes it might like totally go crazy. And that's why we made a copy to begin with. So here is the before and here's the after where we just kind of smooth things out a little bit and maybe it's too extreme. So what you can do, cause these layers are stacked on top of each other. This top layer, I can, uh, let me hide my head again. Um, the opacity, maybe you scrub this down a little bit. So some of that natural texture kind of comes back. So we're at 50%. If I turn this off and back on, you can still see the skin detail there. It doesn't totally go away. It just kind of helps it blend a little bit better. Um, Rob says you could use the dodge tool to pull back the shadows a bit as well. So the dodge tool is over here. So we've got the dodge tool, the burn tool, and the sponge tool. So the burn tool is going to make things darker and you can adjust whether it's adjusting up here in the range, the mid tones, the shadows or the highlights, right? So if I were to 
draw on this, it's gonna darken it up a little bit, okay? But if we're trying to get rid of shadows under our eyes, we wanna use the dodge tool, okay? So again, we can adjust the exposure, we can adjust the range. And so maybe you just kind of bring this in just a tiny bit to kind of lighten it up a little bit, okay? Make it a super subtle, obviously this is too much, I've gone too far, but with the magic of, this is way too much now, I can scrub this opacity down even further on this layer to make it not quite so extreme, okay? So if we zoom back out and we look at that, and we look at the original photo that we brought into here, compared to where we ended up. And those are kind of the techniques you can use to hopefully fix those senior portraits. Cool. All right, guys, I can tell the stream is really getting laggy, 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 lagging. <laughs> the subtitle should be pretty fun on this video. Good stuff. James says, I make it look so easy. Well, keep in mind, James, I've been doing this for over 20 years. Uh, I started when I was in high school, um, back with like Photoshop five, I think it was, I don't even know forever ago. And I started by learning how to literally the first thing I learned how to do was the lasso tool letter L and like cut pieces out. I, I, I remember a rubber duck for some reason, I think it was part of the Photoshop tutorial where we had to like cut these little rubber ducks out. And like, obviously the selections were horrendous. It looks just like taking a scissor, you know, cutting out a piece of a magazine. It was so bad, uh, but that's how you start. That's how you learn. Um, and keep in mind, I don't know if this is encouraging or discouraging, but for over 20 years of experience doing this, I'm still learning new things. So you're, you're never going to know it all. Like, and as soon as you think you do, they make an update. So really it's about like finding what you love, whether it's doing portrait updates or creating posters or making logos, do what you love and then keep going and, um, keep learning about that topic, whether that's through courses that maybe will get you there faster if they're very specific courses. Uh, maybe it's a book. <laughs> I have so many books. Uh, books are a little difficult cause they go outdated so fast. Um, if it's technical stuff, and then of course, YouTube, right? YouTube it, search it. Maybe this is a good reminder. If you guys haven't yet, be sure to uh, hit that follow button. If you're on Behance or subscribe, if you're on YouTube and that way, when I go live, you'll get notifications and then you can join into the conversation and ask your questions. Cool. Um, all right. This was a fun stream. This is very sporadic. Uh, I usually like to keep it pretty focused on one topic, but we were kind of all over the place. We learned a little bit about creating colors, about creating, um, working with colors, like how to find a good color palette. We played around a little bit with selections. We made this uh, interesting, whatever the heck this thing is, this random travel poster card, postcard thing. I don't know. We were playing around. Uh, and then we learned about layer comps, right? How to take one file and create different comps within it and export those. And then we just learned how to kind of clean up skin and remove, you know, rings around the eyes and wrinkles and stuff. So I hope you guys had a good time. I really don't want to shut it down now though, because the conversation has been awesome. So I will be live again, uh, probably every night this week. So similar time, I'm guessing maybe a little earlier in the day, depending on what happens, how my day goes. Uh, so would love to have you guys tune in. Be sure to uh, hit that like button, uh, subscribe, follow, do the things. You guys are awesome. I really, really appreciate you guys hanging out with me tonight and I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Have a good night guys. All right, guys, thanks for watching today. I uh, hope you learned a lot of valuable information and I appreciate you sticking around to the very end. But before you go, just a couple things I want to remind you. The first is if you haven't already, feel free to like this video if you can, depending on where you're watching from, give it a thumbs up or subscribe or tap the bell or give it a follow if you can. And uh, also maybe even just copy the link up in the browser and share it with a friend or post it to your Facebook page. I'd really appreciate that. Uh, but again, just want to say thanks for uh, sticking around and I'd love to continue going live as much as possible and helping you guys out. So the best way that I can help you is by you commenting on the videos below. I read those comments. I engage with them as soon as I can, if I can, when I see them. So if it's live, I'll try and answer you right away. If this is a replay, you can still comment on the video 
video and uh, I go back and I read those. So I just wanted to say thanks again for watching and let me know what you're working on. I'd love to help you out and hopefully we will see you in the next live. And to be sure you don't miss it, like, like this video and subscribe and follow and do the things. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you later.